This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So, determining the transaction price is usually straightforward. However, there may be some complications added in there. You know, but the transaction price is what you expect to sell the goods at, how much you actually expect to receive. Okay. However, you just need to be a little bit careful because there are some add-ons. Uh, it could be that maybe you've sold the goods and you're not going to get the cash in for several years time. So you've sold it on maybe some form of interest free credit. Uh, there is therefore a financing element within that transaction. So you would need to look at the financing element within the transaction price. Uh, there could be some variable consideration. So you might receive more consideration in the future if you meet specific targets within the contract. So that's usually the case if you're constructing an asset to sell to somebody else. There will be performance-related bonuses. So you would recognise those performance-related bonuses within the transaction price if uh, you believe it's going to be probable. Okay. Uh, and then maybe uh, you pay back money to the customer, refunds, rebates. Uh, well, if that's the case, you just reduce the transaction price and reduce, therefore, the amount of revenue that you recognise. Now, I'm not going to go through and run through examples for all of them uh, just yet. We will see variable consideration at the end of everything, but we shall hang fire on that just for now. We're going to look at the significant financing components first of all. OK, uh, so let's have a look here. So you've got the example about the transaction price. Uh, you've got the lookers sells a car to a customer for ten thousand dollars offering interest free credit for a three year period okay and this is where ifrs 15 comes into the four because i've sold a car for ten thousand dollars i've also sold some free interest and nothing in life is free so of that transaction price we need to allocate some of it to the car and some of it as interest OK, because there is interest income. Uh, we've effectively allowed the customer to pay much later than what they would have done today. So therefore, if they were to pay today, they would have paid less to take account of the time value of money. In the future, they're paying more. So there is an interest element implicit within the arrangements. OK, so we need to split it out. We're told here the market rate of interest on the provision of consumer credit to similar customers is 5%. So if this customer was to go out and borrow 10,000 to buy this car, they would be charged 5%. What you and I need to go through and do there is to work out what belong to each. OK, so what you've got here is that there's three year interest free suggests that $10,000 involves that financing component because if you were to pay today you pay a lot less okay so what we go through and do is we know that we're going to receive ten thousand in is it three years well we discount that back to present value at five percent so yeah ten thousand divided by the 1.05 to the power of three uh, because it's three years five percent is 0 0.05 isn't it uh, so that gives you a discount factor. Is it 0.8638? Multiplying the discount factor by that 10,000 cash flow gives you a present value of 8638. So the transaction price for the car is 8638. And the remaining amount, is it there at 1,372? Uh, is to do with the interest income. I haven't got my calculator. I had to do that in my head. You can tell me if I'm wrong. What did I do? 1,372. Sound right. Who cares if it isn't? Okay. So what we've got there is we've got the transaction price of 8638 on the car. The rest, the difference between the 10,000 is the interest income. And the reason why that's important is because the transaction price on the car will be recognised immediately. But then the interest income will be recognised over the life of the contract using some form of amortised cost methodology. OK. Uh, Chris, just stop it before I get to 
to that bit there. I apologise if the videos are short, but it just really works on this standard 